This is Kelly Garney, childhood friend of Randy Rhodes and co-founder of Quiet Riot. And you are watching DC's Daily Dose of Rock Music History. Hey guys, I'm DC Creator and host of Barside Jive, and I want to welcome each of you, that's right guys, each of you, to my daily dose of rock music history. Today is Friday, March 20th, 2020. Happy Friday. Today you're witnessing my Satisfaction Guaranteed Tour Day 46. Are you satisfied? Remember, you too can check out my Daily Dose archives as well as all of my other content on my YouTube channel. It's easy, just search Barside Jive Live. I am coming at you live from the vocal studios in North Dallas. Now let's talk some rock and roll. On this day in 1957, Bobby Helms had his biggest single, Fraulein, reach the U.S. country chart. The record eventually hit number one, spending 52 weeks on the chart, longer than any other song of the 1950s. Later in the year, he would have another number one record with My Special Angel. Bobby released Jingle Bell Rock in November and would return to the U.S. Top 40 on two other occasions. I miss my pretty Fraulein. Fraulein, I loved that song. Yeah, it's a great dance song. Still an unknown local singer, 16-year-old Bobby Rydell makes his first TV appearance on American Bandstand on this day in 1959. Bobby will record his breakthrough hit, Kissin' Time, next June and go on to place a total of 19 songs on Billboard's Top 40 chart. On this day in 1960, Elvis Presley enters a Nashville recording studio for the very first time since being discharged from the U.S. Army. A 12-hour session will produce his next single, Stuck On You, which will top the Billboard chart a month later. Scotty Moore and Bill Black, who had quit Presley's touring band in 1957, are in the studio with him for the last time. Ricky Nelson records Hello, Mary Lou on this day in 1961, which would climb to number nine in the U.S. by early May. On this day in 1968, Eric Clapton, Neil Young, Richie Foray, and Jim Messina are arrested at Stephen Steele's house in Los Angeles, California for being at a place where it is suspected marijuana is being used. It's a misdemeanor for which Clapton will be found innocent while the others paid small fines. David Bowie marries American-born model Angela Barnett on this day in 1969. She is often said to be the subject of the Rolling Stones tune Angie. Why? Well, according to rumor and speculation, Angela, or Angie Bowie, once walked in on her husband, David Bowie, in bed with a naked Mick Jagger. She promised to keep quiet about the gay tryst if the Rolling Stones would write her a song. Bowie was known to be bisexual, and Angie Bowie was open and accepting of his lifestyle, so that part of the rumor seems plausible. But if Angie Bowie really wanted a song, she could have asked her own husband to write one for her, right? I mean, he was totally capable. Besides, Jagger only contributed a little to the writing of the song anyway. Keith Richards wrote most of it. On this day in 1972, Ringo Starr records Back Off Boogaloo which will become the second of his seven U.S. Top 10 singles. The session was produced by George Harrison. I think some backstory is in order here. 
So after the Beatles breakup in April of 1970, it didn't take long for members of the band to tell their version of the story and song. Late that year, George Harrison offered an elegant tune about late Beatles squabbling on his debut solo work, All Things Must Pass. The song titled Run of the Mill dropped subtle hints about his deteriorating relationship with Paul McCartney. You'll arrive at your own made end with no one but you to be offended, George sang. On Paul's side, his Ram album from 1971 zeroed in mostly on John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Too many people, in particular, pissed off John with its measured critique of John's activism and his relationship with Yoko. Soon enough, late 1971, John struck back with the genuinely mean, how do you sleep about Paul? That only left Ringo Starr to weigh in. The Beatles drummer had some words for Paul of his own. They arrived via Ringo's 1972 single, a tune that George helped him write, Back Off Boogaloo. That was Ringo's version of a Paul takedown. In the photo, you can see Ringo with Elton John and Mark Bolin of T-Rex having a drink together to promote the film Born to Boogie in 1972. By the way, this is a great film for you Mark Bolin fans. If you haven't seen it, here's an old promo for the film. Bolin is back in the majestic rock and roll epic Born to Boogie. The legendary T-Rex movie directed by Ringo Starr, starring Mark Bolin and Elton John. The ultimate T-Rex experience, fully restored and rocking with extra features. Born to Boogie, two-disc DVD and soundtrack CD both out now. And it's still available at Amazon, and I'll include the link in the description. How's that for service? Boz Skaggs. Boz Skaggs' biggest album, Silk Degrees, makes its first appearance on the Billboard chart where it will climb to number two on this day in 1976. It's his seventh solo album, but the first to go platinum. Among the accompanying studio musicians were David Paish, Jeff Porcaro, Steve Porcaro, and David Hungay, who would go on to form the band Toto. On this day in 1977, T-Rex played their farewell gig in the UK when they appeared at the Locarno in Portsmouth, England. As pioneers of glam rock, the band placed 11 singles in the British Top 10 between 1970 and 1973. In this photo, Mark performing on stage at the Rainbow Theatre, London, 18 March 1977, just two days prior to the Portsmouth show. On this day in 1980, 28-year-old truck driver Joseph Riviera took over the Asylum Records office in New York at gunpoint and demanded to see either Jackson Brown or the Eagles, wanting them to finance his trucking operation. Wow. He must have been on some serious drugs. Anyway, he surrendered to police when told that neither act was in the office. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts started a seven-week run at number one on the U.S. singles chart with I Love Rock and Roll on this day in 1982. It was a number four hit in the U.K. <music> on this day in 1989, Dick Clark announces his retirement from American Bandstand. On April 8th, comedian David Hirsch would take over, but the show was never the same and came to a final end on October 7th. It continued to tape live at the Harris Club and Casino in Reno, Nevada, and aired locally until about the mid-90s. <music> Eric Clapton's four-year-old son, Connor, fell to his death from the 53rd story of a New York City apartment window on this day in 1991. Such a sad story. The boy was in the custody of his mother, Italian actress Lori Del Santo, and the pair were visiting a friend's apartment. The housekeeper had just cleaned a room 
and opened the window to air it out. Eric was staying in a nearby hotel after taking his son to the circus the previous evening. The tragedy inspired Clapton's song, Tears in Heaven. On this day in 2013, on what would have been their 44th wedding anniversary, Yoko Ono tweeted an image of John's blood-stained glasses overlaid with the message, over 1,057,000 people have been killed by guns in the USA since John Lennon was shot and killed on December 8, 1980. Former Beatles drummer, 77-year-old Ringo Starr, received knighthood from Prince William at Buckingham Palace in London, England on this day in 2018. The honor came 21 years after fellow Beatle Paul McCartney was knighted. When asked what it meant to him, Starr replied, it means recognition for the things we've done. I was really pleased to accept this. And that, kiddies, is rock and roll and wraps my rock history lesson today. But you can wipe away those tears because there's more coming from me to you tomorrow and every day as I peel back the pages of my rock music history and explore the past of the rock legends on my daily dose of rock music. You can catch up on all my daily dose episodes and all my content. Just go to YouTube, look for Barside Jive Live. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Barside Jive. I do appreciate you hanging out with me today during my daily dose. Do me a favor and please seek every day to be a hero in someone's life. Emotionally, physically, financially, lots of ways to do it. Just make it happen. I will see you very soon. In the meantime, peace, love, and rock and roll. All right, Boner, it's all yours. Have mercy. Good night, Bill. SideJiveLive.com